That's a good strategy for a higher, high achieving doctoral candidate. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I hate to speak for everyone, but I've kind of gotten the stuff, except in the math class. <laughs> we all had questions. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> lots and lots and lots of questions. I was catching up on grading today, so I was reading the discussion board from module five, and it cracked me up because uh, I think it was Rex that wrote, if I'd only, only known all of this before I decided to change jobs. So I'm like, I hope you all are getting kind of those epiphanies every now and then. It's like, oh. <laughs> So, I mean, Nancy, I have a really quick question about the grades. Mm -hmm. and I don't know that if it matters. You gave me my points in team learning, but technically I was in personal mastery. So I got the points, but there was the wrong column. That means I had your name in the wrong group. Okay. Yeah. Or I flipped the group. So probably everybody in your group got the wrong one. It doesn't matter. You just need to have it in one of the four columns. Okay. You know, the high achiever in me wants just to make sure that you know. <laughs> you, you, you want us to be perfect just like you, Teresa. I just want you to know I'm okay with it as long as you know and you don't change it. Sorry. I read, I read four master's degree projects today for final revision, so I'm a little loopy myself. It's like oh, man. your eyes start crossing after a while. Because at this point, it's mostly APA review, you know, and it's just like so tedious. So. Yeah. In May, we, well, in a, in a couple of years, we'll be reading your dissertations this time of year, but right now we mostly read in May because we were working with the Bakersfield. Well, they even, even Bakersfield, I think they graduated in May. So it'll be good because all of you will be staggered from the Fresno group, so. We won't be doing double cross-eyed. We'll just be cross-eyed in December and cross-eyed in May from APA reviews and things like that. <laughs> so what semester would you say the bulk of our writing happens in? So it depends. So are you talking about your dissertation? Yes. Yes. Okay. So what will happen is your as soon as you pass your comp exam, you will be able to select a chair and organize a committee. So I'm going to say this knowing all of you are just now self-proclaimed um, over time. I've noticed that anyway with the work is that um, as soon as you have a committee together, you can actually start the work and you start the lit review. Many people, because you're not officially um, signed up for dissertation units at that time, many people wait until the next uh, semester or summer, which is a really bad idea. So basically you can start as soon as you um, complete the comps and the bulk, of the, the bulk of the writing for chapters one, two, and three happen right away because um, you, you have to have one, two, and three written before you can defend. Uh, and then you conduct the research and then you write chapters four and five. So let me add to that, it's defend your proposal. Defend your proposal. Right. Yes, correct. So let me that clarify. Spring 19, right? Spring 19, yes. yes. Okay. She's she's trying to figure out what semester to take her sabbatical. Oh, God. <laughs> when do you take your comps? January 19? I think so. Okay. I can't take it until our final year of the program. So it would either be fall or spring of that final year. Because I got tenure last week. I would take it. I, I take it in fall. Okay. Well, but what was, no, what you say? you can't take I it. Take it in, I would take it, oh yeah, the summer doesn't count because summer. Well, you can't count. take it until fall 20, right? Teresa? Yes. Or is it fall I can take it fall 19. Okay. Yeah, fall yeah. 19. I would take it fall. Yeah. Because yeah. I got tenured last week. Congratulations. 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 <laughs> yeah, you, you know, right after you get your chair, you're going to want to identify your problem statement and then see okay. if you can begin to close in on some research questions, then dig into your lit review and go back and change those as necessary. So that first part is a dance back and forth, and you can do that while you're doing other classes. 
But when you actually uh, get into the, the methodology section and um, doing that work, it's going to be time intensive and it may take time away where you'd have to go and do some interviews or whatever you've decided to study. So that, that fall semester is where you want to get the bulk of the work done. So you, all you have for spring is revision and, but no interviews and defense. Before you defend. Before IRB, right. Before your preliminary defense. So you do your preliminary defense and then you get your IRB and then you conduct your research. Right. Okay. The, the final defense is actually um, more of, uh, if you've done it well and you've worked well with your chair, it, it is more of a celebration of what you've been able to accomplish. It's the preliminary defense or the defense of your proposal that's very intense. And as, uh, that also, one other caveat for that is as long as there's not a lot of revisions after your uh, proposal defense, which unfortunately I experienced with a student just recently. So that was a lot of changes that had to happen after the preliminary defense, which is Yeah, and I would say that depends on your chair. So yes. some chairs will not let you defend if it's not perfect. As long as the chair knows it's not perfect. <laughs> I don't let you defend. <laughs> It'll just be, that's how I am, because uh, I don't want you to fail the defense. And if it goes in and it's not perfect, pretty much close to perfect, you, you would have the chance of failing the defense. And I always feel the responsibility of that as the chair, so. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but you know what? You have a guide on the side, your chair's your guide on the side, your coach. So you, you. Um, I mean, it's, it is independent, but you're not alone. So I don't want you to feel like, don't have trepidation over it. You can do it. And she was only trying to figure out what semester to take her stuff. I know, but then when it comes up, then everybody's thinking that and nobody says it. It also makes me nervous when we talk about defending, though, Tracy. She's That's been talking fine. about it since I started my job there. Because <laughs> I figured out, like, the timing works out perfectly. Very good. Does anybody else have any questions about the course? doing okay silence I know I have a quick question um, oh good uh, in in the examples that you shared with us I saw that one has a table of contents and one doesn't do you want a table of contents or not so how do you feel about that dr. Weeks? <laughs> Well, typically, case studies don't have a table of contents because they're not that long. That's true. Um, dissertations would. Sometimes theses will, but typical articles, which is kind of the length that you should be writing for this, won't have a table of contents. It takes up too much space. Okay. Because uh, public, publication houses spaces of a maximum for them, it, you know, costs them. So you don't want to put anything you don't absolutely need. So that tells you about the demeanor of the students that put the table of contents in. So that was probably another group of high achievers that was trying to like, you know, they just put things in there that weren't, wasn't really necessary. Okay. Sometimes templates have them too. So if you're working off a specific That's template, it'll have one in there. Thank you. You're welcome. No questions, Ray, Jennifer, Jackie. Marith? No, I'm just, we're chugging along. Life is good. Oh, good. good. <laughs> Sorry, I was on mute because my life, my house is a little chaotic right now. <laughs> but no, no real questions. We've been plugging away on our case study, so I think we'll have that in this week or by Sunday. So we'll be near the end on that. Yeah, same. <laughs> So just remember, I'm the one that will put the links up. So as soon as you have your group, um, Zoom or whatever other recording you're doing, whatever app you're using to record, just send it to me and then I will post it up for you. Um, because Dr. Weasel will both, will both, I won't even look at it until it's posted anyway. So um, you can just send it to me so it doesn't get confusing because my job is to get it posted so everyone can see it. So it looks like they're all chugging along good, Chuck. Merith, nothing else from you? No, everything is okay here. All right. <laughs> well, good. Good.
Unless you want to see a dog in a Santa outfit. That's what I have to offer. To you. <laughs> I'd like to see that, Maris. I'd like to see it. <laughs> Off your Santa outfit. Oh my goodness! Very cute. Very cute. <laughs> did you make? Did you make that? Yeah, no. Oh. <laughs> I got it for about three dollars, like three, three years ago after Christmas, and he loves it. It's his favorite sweater. Oh, favorite how nice! Away. How nice! <laughs> and there's another Santa outfit I see. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Very cute. It's actually horrible. It says Santa Paws on the back in glittery letters, and it has it says Ho Ho Ho, and it has snowflakes, and it's quite detailed. Yes. <laughs> I'm impressed. You didn't have to bling it, did you? It was already blinged. <laughs> it's pretty blinged. <laughs> uh oh, we have more. We have more animals coming in here. <laughs> Well, all right. No Santa outfit, though. No Santa outfit. Don't buy one now. Buy it after Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Any anything else anybody has? Anybody needs? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good we'll luck on completing everything. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Okay. Take care. Let us know if you if we if you need anything from either of us. Just write to us. Thanks. Have a good night. You too.